So next dating method is called cosmogenic radionuclide geochronology, or COSMO, we say sometimes. So I'll just do a quick review of the method and applications, and then I'll show three examples of surface dating for slip rate, profile dating for terrace age, and then burial dating for erosion rate. And most of this comes from te the tectonic geomorphology textbook. So the, in a way, so the it's same starting point as we had for C14 is happening with cosmogenic radionuclides is we have these high energy charged particles coming into the top of the atmosphere and there's this cascade of all of these particles that are produced. And some of them, when they hit the rocks, produce certain isotopes and that's why they're called cosmogenic, right? It means born from the cosmos. And so that's the only way usually that they're produced. And so therefore it gives us a measure if we can understand how this works of the time that a rock or a target material is near the surface. And so it's complex because it's modulated by solar activity, earth magnetic field, geography, and uh, we have to understand all the controls but it's starting to become really powerful for a lot of, of active faulting studies. And the main isotopes or nuclides, we do a lot with beryllium-10, aluminum-26, chlorine-36. And then one uh, I've been hearing more about this summer, for example, is that um, these noble gas, so helium-3 and neon-21. And uh, the, there's some centers that are really into this uh, methodology, and so one of the top ones is this Dalhousie Geochronology Center. So these are guys are in Canada. There are other many other groups doing this, but they have a really nice reference. All every detail of cosmogenic dating is in here. That link. So basically, these particles come down and they hit the rock, and it, there's sometimes we have to deal with what we call topographic shielding. So you want to, you know, if you're in a deep canyon, you obviously have less access to the sky as if you're on the top of a mountain and there's, you know, just the horizon. So you sometimes, when you collect the samples, you may have to measure, like if we're in a canyon, we'll measure the angle to the skyline in multiple directions around. So we can correct for this, what you call topographic shielding. So here's basically what happens is that these, we, we produce these particles at the surface by these co the collisions between the uh, particles that are produced in the atmosphere and the target uh, atoms. And most of them are produced at the rock surface. So that's called the P0 or the production rate at the surface. But the more mass you go through, the more absorbent there is. So there's kind of a uh, exponential decay in production rate with depth. And this V star is the E-folding depth, or about one-third less. Uh, it, it's when it's gone down by a factor of one over E, or about 2.7. And so Z is the depth, but in a way it's the total number of atoms that you're going through, so it's, you have to do a density correction to get the true depth. But uh, And so then the main equation is that the number of atoms per unit volume over time is equal to this production rate, which is basically the cosmic rate flux uh, at that point. But mo many of these isotopes decay. So beryllium-10, lumen-26, uh, chlorine-36 are decaying at the same time as they're being produced. So now the stable isotopes, helium, neon, argon, they don't decay. So for them, this not it's not this is zero, but for the other ones, this minus lambda over n is the time span is the the decay. So we're producing them, but they're decaying. So uh, this trade off we have to account for. So target minerals, uh, you can have uh, for the stable isotopes or the stable noble gases. You see the targets are like, especially olivine, so, and pyroxene, so these are been used a lot in basalt. And, and that can be really good, maybe around volcanoes around here. Um, 
But the, the trick is you really have to understand what's going on because you're really knowledgeable about the production rate at the surface, but if it's your eroding, then you're removing material that had produced isotopes in it. So we need to really, for most cases, well, for all cases, we have to understand the geomorphic history, but for most cases, we want to find no erosion. So this, when this has worked really well, is on very fresh surfaces. So examples are like a, a glacial groove, so you know that's been at the surface since it formed, or the very pure top of a lava flow that is still the hoi hoi texture or something like that. So other uh, isotopes uh, that are radiogenic are these, the beryllium 10, luna 26, chlorine 36, and even C14 can be produced in situ as a, uh, a cosmogenic isotope not the kind we were just talking about, because these are produced in the rock from these minerals. And these, so these targets are especially quartz. So the beryllium and aluminum work best on, on quartz-rich material. So, uh, so again, could be a challenge for some places in Indonesia. It's nice if you have quartz in the watershed, so you can, uh, or granite or something that's a little bit more felsic, but chlorine 36 can work well on a more wide range of rock types. And so this is the one figure from the Dalhesi guide. So they use, this shows many examples. You can date all kinds of things, just have to be creative. So the main kinds of things we're looking at are, are basically surfaces. So some event happens and a surface material deposited there or a surface is formed by erosion and we can see the scarf. And so we date that surface. So that sits there and it, it's getting bombarded and we're, we're creating more and more of these atoms over time. And so, you know, we can date many uh, features that are produced but we can also get rates, which are uh, to, to kind of look at, like, if if you're eroding at a steady rate, then, you know, we're producing atoms, but then they're being eroded away. And so if we understand what's going on, we can actually determine an erosion rate by looking at the amount of atoms in there. Because if you imagine you take this production curve, and you're sort of moving it down the rock over time because we're eroding, uh, then, it, you know, there will be less accumulation with time of the atoms. But uh, we, so if the erosion rate is high, it won't produce very much. But if the erosion rate is low, it will have high production. Obviously, if the erosion rate is zero, that's the simplest case. We'll talk about the erosion rate in a little bit more in a moment. So, so that's uh, kind of basic applications. Now I'll just or I'll just show a few that maybe you may uh, find you know more concrete. So here's one where uh, this research team was looking at this fault zone in eastern California. It's called the Death Valley Fish Lake Valley Fault Zone, so strike slip fault. And so they took here's one example. So they had lidar. So they could have high resolution topography of these fan surfaces. So this particular fan here, it's a alluvial fan with boulders on it. And so the, all these little dots show the boulders that they sampled. And so they assumed that, that nothing had happened to the boulder. It was deposited and it had no radionuclides, no cosmogenic nuclides that it brought with it. So it just sits there accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. And then they measured eight of them, and so the composite beryllium-10 age is 71 plus or minus 8,000 years. So that's then they, what they assume the age of that surface is. Then they use the topography to basically reconstruct it. So they look at these matching pieces, like this one channel here matches there, but also these guys match here. Um, what else matched up? Look like some of these smaller ones match. So this is the, 
the topography and the map, this is the, the aspect. So it's the facing direction of the topography. So, you know, the light color is facing north. The dark color would be facing south or, or west. So this just helps them find the top of the fan as they're reconstructing it like this. So they do the retro deformation, 178 plus or minus 20 meters. So that's the offset. And we assume it occurred since the fan formed to get a 2.5 millimeter year slipper. So they did it on another fan nearby. And same kind of thing, this fan is broken by two faults. They can track this drainage across uh, the faults, match it up, and also match the, 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 you know, they match the drainage on the fan, but also the overall fan form. We construct that to get 290 plus or minus 20. They did nine boulders on the top of this thing. And they get a 94 plus or minus 11,000 year old date. So they come up with three millimeters a year. So the really basic application of the, the dating and just assuming that you can apply the really simplest principles of the cosmogenic rate of nuclear production and you're only basically worrying about P0, the production at the surface. Involved in just like a lot of these other methods in calibration. So, you know, we get samples from, let's say, a lava flow that we know the exact age of from some other means, and we measure the isotope in it for cosmogenics, and then we can test to determine the production rate. And so th there's a big effort to determine kind of global production rates. So if you know where you are, your latitude and your elevation, you can basically look up what P0 would be. So that's, that's done. And in terms of the, the other thing I, I don't have an illustration for here is the processing. So we take the rocks, like, uh, where's our graphic? So we take these minerals and separate them from the rock that you've sampled. And then you do processing to basically remove the atoms of interest. So in some ways it's analogous to the C14 dating where we made the graphite, so pure carbon, basically a sequence of mostly acid dissolution gets rid of all the other material except for, let's say, the beryllium 10 atoms, build a target, and then it goes to the accelerator mass spectrometer again. So same facility that does C14 measurements would do the beryllium, it's these beryllium 10, aluminum 26, C4, uh, the Cosmogenic C14 and aluminum 26 are all on the same accelerators. The noble gases use the noble grass uh, mass spectrometer, which is a different device, but same concept. So that's how you, you actually get the measurement of the atoms. And then if you know the atoms and the production rate, you can determine the time. So here's another example that's going a little bit more complicated. So here, we have these marine terraces. So if you remember my lecture on geomorphic markers, so here's the modern sea edge, but with uplift, we, we lift the sea edge out of interaction with the ocean. And so we have an old marine terrace edge here. And then another one back here. And then there's actually a third one there. So if you want to date the, the terrace surface, you can use cosmogenic dating. But a lot of times we, we may worry, well, can we identify any rock on the surface that's been sitting there ever since the ocean went away? Maybe we can't. So instead, what we do is do a profile date. So you dig a pit. And so in this case, you might dig a pit that's three meters deep. And, and so basically what we're looking for is this curve. And this is rate. So it's like, you know, time, it's atoms per time, but if you multiply times time, it'll have the same shape, right? So if I have a higher production rate here and a lower production rate there, but I multiply by the same age, same age, it'll, it'll be a exponential decrease in number of atoms, just like it's an exponential decrease in production rate.
if it's the same surface and all the same age. So what I'm looking for is this exponential decrease in basically in, in the number of atoms. And so you can see this axis here is beryllium pen concentration, millions of atoms per gram of quartz. And so at, at what we see is as you get closer to the surface, we see there's more and more atoms. And so what we can do is fit those measurements, fit them with an exponential, and that'll help us understand what's the post-depositional production. So we assume that at the beginning, there's some starting amount in beryllium-10 that's inherited. So these particles are, are eroded from some hill slope, and they were maybe accumulating some beryllium-10 there. And then they move down the river, or they're in the, the wash of the beach, and they're near the surface, so they may accumulate some beryllium-10 as well. So they, they have some, not zero. But then they are deposited as a single deposit of material covering that terra surface. And we assume that it's so well mixed at time zero that it's kind of a constant initial amount in beryllium-10 that's called the inheritance. So then over time, we accumulate more beryllium-10 with this exponentially uh, decreasing production rate with depth. So we fit this exponential, and we can determine the time that it took to produce the, that uh, amount, those atoms with that relationship. And so what they show us is that this is about 15,000-year-old marine terrace surface. So this is called a profile date because it's a, a, like a soil profile. You have to dig a pit. And you're going down to find the, the bottom of the, the sort of modern production. So you're going down to find this, this point down here. But one thing that was done, especially Anderson, of, 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 he said, well, you know, here on the top of the, the, they did many measurements and they showed, well, first of all, it is going from younger to older. We see that the older terraces definitely have more of an exponential increase in concentration of brilliant pen. So, because as I said, the assumption is that at the beginning it's, it's, perf it's vertical. And then over time, these, these near surface materials accumulate more cosmogenic nuclide. The problem was that they realized that especially on these terraces, animals are burrowing and they're mixing this upper zone. And so, you know, the burrows are taking this, this high, um, concentrations of beryllium and aluminum particles and taking them down, and then these low ones are going up. So they identified this upper bioturbation zone that was kind of causing sort of problems. But then they could still do the dating off of the exponential portion below. So that was still seemed to work. And, and so they got some good ages for these terraces. And so this method is commonly applied to marine terraces and, and fluvial terraces and also glacial moraine. Okay, so then the last of these methods is, uh, or the last way you can use the cosmogenic nuclides is is uh, basically in the, what we call burial dating. What this does is, is, is you take the sample or the rock goes, comes from somewhere and has some beryllium and aluminum in it that's cosmogenic because it was on a hill slope somewhere, accumulating material, and it gets transported down a river. And in this case, this is in the Sierra Nevadas of California, there are these caves. And in these caves, the river was flowing, and it left some conglomerate. But the conglomerate had beryllium and aluminum uh, cosmogenic nuclides in it because it was exposed to the sun, to the atmosphere and was accumulating and so it gets to these places but then once it's in the cave it's so deep that there's no more production because it's deep 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 you know it's like on this curve it's way down under here so there's no production so in our our this equation p0 is negative zero there's no p0 because it's too deep so the, all that we have is decay 
but we're starting with some amount of, of beryllium and aluminum. And so if you have the two isotopes, you can, and we know the decay rate for aluminum is a little bit different than the decay rate for um, beryllium-10. And so it's possible to do the paired ages to determine the, the time since it was buried. And so the bat cave, for example, three million years ago, the river was at this level. And then down, then Boyden Cave, the river was here one million years ago, and Bear Cave, it was there 300,000 years ago. And so they could show in this pretty interesting study that the erosion rate was fairly rapid early on, and then it sort of slowed down. Okay, so that's the summary of the cosmogenic method.